In this year's 30 day session, there were many bills introduced that dealt with crime, and there's one that caught our attention here at New Mexico in Focus. House Bill 336 was passed unanimously by both houses and signed by the governor. It calls for the New Mexico Department of Public Safety to create and maintain a database of criminal records. That information will feed into the federal system for background checks during gun purchases. Our producer Sarah Gustava sat down this week with the bill's sponsor and a community advocate to talk about the broader significance of this legislation. I'd like to welcome Representative Nate Gentry to our studios this week. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Also, Miranda Viscoli, co-president of New Mexicans to Prevent Gun Violence. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'd like to start with you, Representative Gentry. You sponsored House Bill 336. Why was this an important piece of legislation for you this year? Well, there are a couple uh, high-profile crimes this year that we're all familiar with. And, you know, there have been some very troubling statistics. The FBI um, found that New Mexico is the third most dangerous state in the nation with respect to violent crime. Uh, the murder rate in the city of Albuquerque went up 52% in, in 2015 from the preceding year. So there was a need to do some things to keep our community safer, and that was the you know, impetus b b behind uh, House Bill 336. A key part of this is a database, which might seem kind of abstract to folks. How is that part of preventing crime? Well, the problem as it exists now and was fixed by, by that bill is that there are about six different databases in existence right now, and they are not, the information contained in those databases is not contained in any one place. So what, um, what this uh, database will allow law enforcement to do and judges to do is have a good sense of the person standing before them. So for example, if uh, a judge has a criminal defendant before them and has to make a pretrial release decision like bail or bond, having access to that information will allow them to make good decisions because they have full access to the criminal history. What did you hear from law enforcement as you were crafting this legislation? Uh, they're, they're very much in favor of it. You know, the Supreme Court uh, put together their ad hoc committee on pretrial release, and they made recommendations as to what we could do in the legislature to prevent, um, you know, repeat offenders, particularly those out on bail, um, from committing additional crimes. And so this is something they recommended and supported, and uh, we had unanimous support in the House and the Senate. And this is also going to be used by the federal government as part of uh, the database to check when people are purchasing guns as well. How does that work? Well, there's a, there's a second component to the bill, which brings New Mexico into compliance with the National Instant Check Amendments Act. And currently, New Mexico is the only state um, that was not compliant with that federal law. And what that means is that um, the Office of the Administrative Office of the Courts, as well as um, some, uh, several other agencies are required to, to report information to the Department of Justice, um, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. So that when people go and purchase, ba um, when people purchase firearms, a background check is done and to make sure that we don't, uh, we're not selling firearms to people who shouldn't have them. Mm. Miranda, why is your organization interested in this legislation? Why did you support well, it? Well, we had, we had we'd actually been pushing this legislation for four years. And one of the most important parts for us for this legislation was making sure that those who are suffering from severe mental illness, that their names are going into the NIC system. That's the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. And the reason for that is when you look at gun violence in New Mexico, more than half are suicide. So what this does is um, folks who probably shouldn't be buying a firearm can't go to an FFL licensee and purchase a firearm because they now will be prohibited with the background check system. Um, that being said, I think it's important to say when it comes to mental illness that the NRA would love it if we um, kept saying, hey, there's not a problem with gun violence in this country. You know, we need to fix you know, the problem with mental illness. Folks who are suffering from mental illness have a most likely will not hurt somebody else. In fact, there's evidence-based research from John Hopkins that shows that I think 4% of those who are suffering from mental illness will hurt somebody else. They'll most likely inflict harm upon themselves with suicide. So we really wanted to make sure those names were going in as another way to help make sure that they didn't hurt themselves. And what were you guys talking with lawmakers about as this bill came up in the legislature this year? Um, we were talking about making, um, the, also the fact that what um, Representative Gentry was saying is now we can boost up our background check system. So we can now go after um, federal grant money that I think was put aside by the Bush administration in 2009 um, so that we can boost that um, background check system because the system is only as good as it works and right now it, it's not working very well. So this gives us that opportunity. 
Are those dollars important for to bring into New Mexico? Absolutely. You know, New Mexico is missing out, was missing out on um, um, a great deal of federal grant money to improve the information rep we report to the National Institute Check System. And so we're now eligible to apply for that money, and hopefully it'll make, it'll ensure that, you know, we have very good information in that database so, you know, convicted felons can't go into a gun store and buy a firearm. Mm. When you were working on this legislation, did you hear from folks they were concerned about privacy, maybe making sure people whose names weren't accidentally on the list? Was that an issue that came up? No, um, you know, there was pretty overwhelming support. I mean, this is one of those rare instances where, um, you know, we put a lot of work in over the past four years working with Miranda's group as, as well as the NRA. And it's, uh, you know, a bill that everyone agreed to, including those two groups. So The NRA didn't oppose it. They didn't oppose yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we're very pleased that uh, through a lot of hard work, you know, over the course of several years, um, we were able to get a bill together that everyone could support. There was not one person, I think, in any committee that testified in opposition. Mm. Do you, what do you think was different about this year? Well, again, I think there were some very high-profile crimes. Um, you know, New Mexico, unfortunately, and something we're trying very hard to fix is, is a violent, violent place as compared to other states. So um, I think there is a push um, to get some things done to make sure that people are safe in their homes in this state. And Miranda, do you think there was anything different this year? Did you notice a different kind of tone when you were talking with lawmakers? I think that I think people are more and more they're fed up with gun violence, not only in this state but in this country. And I think that I think that the needle is tipping. That I think people realize, hey, you know what? We are fine with law-abiding folks having a firearm. You can have as many, buy as many firearms as you want, but if you're a convicted felon or a domestic violence offender or a teenager, unless you're going to the hunting range or hunting with your get up, hunting with your parents, there's no reason to have a firearm. And I think, I think. New Mexicans are realizing that we need to all come to the table. And the great thing about this bill was it really shows that Republicans, Democrats, we can all sit at the table and get something done and, and all agree on it. Um, and I think it, and in the long run, really showed that um, progress is, is happening at this point, finally, on gun violence prevention. Thank you both for joining us this week. Thank, Thank you. you.